this place a new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space our fears and our dreamings brought to you here in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history. All to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty. Gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly. Give us the courage to enter the song. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away. Here in this place the new light is shining, now is the kingdom and now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever, gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all peoples together, fire of love in our flesh and our bone. Welcome to worship. We are now in the season of Pentecost. Uh, some people call it ordinary time. Some people call it common time. As you know, it's no ordinary time, but we're in the green and growing season, so you see the new pyramids. And this is a good time to exhibit new growth and learn. And so we welcome you to worship, and we begin with confession and forgiveness together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we, we confess, confess that we, we do, do not, not trust your, your abundance, and, and we deny your presence in our lives. We, we place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We, we fail to believe that, that you have provided enough for all. all. We, we abuse your good creation for our own benefit. benefit. We, we fear difference, and we don't welcome others as you have welcomed us. We, we sin in thought, word, word and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through, through your love, renew us. And, and in, in your, your spirit, lead us. us so, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts, that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 The first reading comes from the book of Exodus, the 19th chapter. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, 
You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all of the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and said before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The second lesson comes from the book of Colossians, the third chapter. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, halle, alleluia, 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 halle, gospel for the second Sunday after Pentecost comes from Matthew's gospel, the ninth chapter, beginning with the 35th verse. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, 
no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and, a chi and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, kids. Glad you could be here for the children's sermon. I thought I'd uh, talk a little bit to you from uh, my house with one of my dogs here. His name is Maxwell. He's a pretty nice dog, I think, for the, for the most part anyway. Anyway, we live in a really crazy time. This time that you've had to sit at home all this time with your family, trying to figure out for some of you what it means to go to school online, and that's hard. It's hard to know what's, what's real and what's not real. It's hard to know how we live together as a community meant more time for us to be with those that we love. But it also means we can't be with our friends very often. It's a difficult time. But you know, the one thing I found comfort in is that we're never alone. You have your family, you have your pets, even goofy ones like Maxwell here. And it's a reminder that God is with you too. God has never left your side. He's always with you. And for that, we are grateful. So when things get frustrating or things get scary, just know that God is there. And that'll bring you some comfort. God is your friend. And God loves you. That's a fantastic word for today. May you be blessed for your week ahead. Right, Max? Say goodbye, Max. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from our God and Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. It seems as if this is a good Sunday to talk about what it means to be a disciple. In our text, we have the calling of the disciples. They are named in Matthew, and uh, in the naming of those disciples, we too could find ourselves uh, among those who are named as Jesus' followers. In the waters of our baptism, God claims us and makes us his own. And in this story, as Jesus calls out his disciples to follow and to be his disciples, he gives them the ability to carry out his own ministry uh, in the world as he know it. He gives them the authority to cast out demons and heal people. It is an action a term. He calls the disciples to act in his name. It's not a matter of just listening, sitting back and feeling safe, sitting at Jesus' feet and listening to his stories and saying, yeah, I like what he has to say. But rather, being a disciple is to be called out to bear witness to the good news of Jesus. And you might ask, what is that good news? The good news is the kingdom of heaven is near. It is in your midst. What does it look like? What does Jesus call his disciples to do? To 
to bring about healing and wholeness, to bring hope for the hopeless, love for the loveless, justice for all. How do you feel about that? Some might not like being a disciple. Some of you might be mad at your parents for the gift of baptism and teaching if that's what you understand it to be about. Some of you might not even want the calling. It's okay. Even if you're upset, it's okay because even Judas is called as a disciple too and yet Judas is loved by Jesus. So maybe it would be helpful for us to imagine what it means to be called a disciple of Jesus. And if we look in the context of this story, it'll be helpful to understand that better and how it might help us. This uh, chapter 9 follows the Sermon on the Mount. And in this chapter 9, Jesus begins his public ministry in a real way. It is the first action in the gospel, really, after his uh, long sermon in those chapters 5 through 8. There's lots of healings and exorcisms. Jesus is bringing the kingdom with him. And this is God's intention. Jesus brings the kingdom with him into the world. And this is what it looks like. Justice and mercy. Wholeness and healing. God cares for those the world cares little about. Love is the rule of God's kingdom. God loves this world now. It's not about waiting for some future other geographical place, but Jesus brings the kingdom with him into that time and place just as we are in the midst of God's kingdom around us even now. The popularity of Jesus grows as people begin to witness his healings and his exorcisms. They start to gain momentum as they see a new possibility for a new reality. Now imagine this, if you live on the fringe of society, justice seems so far away. But Jesus brings a new reality. You can't contain your joy. In fact, one of the stories right before our text for tonight is Jesus heals some blind men and Jesus tells them after he heals them, now just be quiet, don't go and tell anybody. And as soon as he brings them healing and they can see, they run off leaping and jumping and screaming at the top of their lungs that Jesus has healed them. They can't stay silent. They only have joy. Jesus and the kingdom brings hope to people who have little hope. Now we also learn in that chapter that those in power, the religious leaders, don't like it one bit. Jesus plays loosey-goosey with the religious laws, and they are the good law and order types. Sabbath laws. How can you possibly heal on the Sabbath, Jesus? Don't you know our religious laws? Or food laws. How could you possibly eat with tax collectors and sinners? They are dirty. They are uh, unclean. How could you possibly do this? What kind of a rabbi are you? We are law and order. This is how God's world works. But Jesus, you see, is bringing the kingdom. And the kingdom is not that reality. So what does it mean to be called to follow this Jesus as he beckons his his disciples to go out and to do his work in the world? Jesus tells them, travel light. Don't bring your baggage. It's hard to move from town to town lugging everything with you. It's both a literal call and a figurative call, right? I mean, it would be very difficult to lug all of your stuff with you as you went out to do your work as Jesus calls them to do, to heal and to cast out demons and to bring the kingdom with them. It would just be too difficult to move around with all their stuff. But it's also figuratively because he's also telling them, leave your baggage at home. You have a new call. You are a new reality. You are one of my followers. I have called you. You are mine. Now go out and bear witness to the kingdom that is near. And so when you go out with that baggage, go into towns and receive hospitality from people you don't know, from strangers. Do your job. That's what you're called to do, and bring the kingdom with you. Now, it's not always going to be easy. Some places won't receive you, and simply instead of being so worried about how you're going to be treated, dust off the sand from your Shoes and go on. But Jesus also knows that he sends the disciples out into the world, into a place that doesn't want to hear what this kingdom is all about. 
this kingdom that flies in the face of the reality of the laws of the religion of the day. Jesus says, see, I'm sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. People might rise up against you. People might be upset about the way that you're standing with people on the fringe of society, eating with tax collectors and sinners and prostitutes. People might rise up against you because you are comforting the afflicted and afflicting the comfortable. He says, be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Being a disciple takes work. But you're never alone. God is at work through Jesus' followers. He says, don't worry about what you're going to say. Don't worry about making sure that the speech is perfect or what, how you act is perfect because the Holy Spirit will work through you. God will work through you to do the ministry that you've been called to do. And so we end today with this question, what about you? Where do you see God at work around you? I think we are in a moment. It's a tough moment. George Floyd's murder has brought our whole broken system of justice into light. And the question that I've been struggling with in the past couple of weeks is, why George? Why now? Other innocent black lives have been taken away unjustly before George. Lots of them in our 400-year history of slavery in this country. We are coming up this week on the fifth anniversary of the murder of nine black Americans doing Bible study in their own church. A murder committed by a young man who grew up in an ELCA church. Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor more recently murdered senselessly. What is it about this time that's different from all those other times. Was it the power of the video? Maybe, just maybe, this time is a gift. Maybe it is a gift to us to stop and consider what the kingdom of heaven is supposed to look like. The Gospel of Matthew speaks about God's kingdom, kingdom breaking in and standing with people on the fringe of society. Jesus eats with tax collectors and sinners in the first chapter of his uh, active ministries beyond the Sermon on the Mount. God's kingdom breaking in and he heals broken people, broken by their lost hopes, broken by hatred and anger, broken by disease, broken by unfaithfulness, by a loss of care and apathy. But you see, Jesus isn't settling for any of that. Jesus comes bringing the kingdom with him to bring a new reality. God is doing a new thing, creating opportunities out of horrific bad things to redefine what it means to be faithful. So what does it mean for us? Us who are privileged, who sometimes get to witness things from afar, what does it mean to be called to bring the kingdom of heaven into this world, into our time and our place? It seems as if it's about telling the story. We know what it means to be broken. We don't understand what it means to deal with the brokenness of being a person of color. I don't in particular. But I also understand brokenness. And it's in those times of brokenness when we can see God standing with us. Imagine when that's happened for you, alone in a hospital room during this COVID time. Imagine being on a respirator and no friends or family can be near. Broken after hearing terrible medical news broken in the midst of a blown-up relationship where you don't under understand how it happened in the first place. You are not alone because God is the God of broken people and out of that brokenness we are called to tell the story. We are called to tell others about God's love. We are called to be honest about who we are. We are called to be honest about our own racism 
Because in our understanding of our own racist ideas, we can understand that we also are broken. And when we can begin to understand our brokenness, maybe we can begin to understand healing that can take place. Living in a way that bears witness to a God of broken people allows others to see God at work. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God is about addition and not subtraction. The psalmist cries out from his own brokenness the hope that is founded on God's saving grace. In Psalm 30, she says, For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Because God will have the last say, and God is love. And for that we give thanks and praise. Jesus calls you to be a follower, calls you to be a disciple. You could find your name listed among those other disciples in Matthew. Will you follow? Amen. Together we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, believe in God, God, the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth. earth. I, believe I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, our Lord, who was, was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He, he descended, descended to the dead. dead. On the On third day he rose again, again. He ascended, he ascended into heaven, heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith. Inspire us to be good listeners. Guide your church that we might be a holy people. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. great. Holy One, we have created divisions you will not own. In this time of conflict and protest, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace, justice, and reconciliation. Encourage organizations and individuals who care for all who are struggling these days. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick, especially Jane, Linda, and Mary. Feed all who hunger. Empower all whose voices go unheard and help us respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Holy One, you provide a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. Prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this congregation that we might discover new ways of living. Minister to us in our work that we do not lose heart. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us, especially Steve Wanvig. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up to join the saints in light. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So uh, I have some announcements for you, but uh, it'll go much better and it'll digest the news a lot better if you, uh, if you see me do this. This is the new dance craze taking over all of the stay-at-home church members at OSLC. So apparently you got to do a lot faster, but I'm not that coordinated. So <laughs> there you go. You guys can all practice this. The kids tell me it's called flossing your teeth. Right? Is that right, Matt? All right. So now hear about these announcements that are much more important than my awesome dance moves. Is that... Uh, Shelly has a Zoom meeting with anyone who's interested for uh, young families and youth in the church. That's on Tuesday, which is in two days, and it's at uh, 10.30 and 7.30. So make sure you read the newsletter and get all that information about those Zoom meetings happening at this Tuesday, this week. Uh, and then also, what else was I supposed to announce? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, keep checking in with each other. You guys are doing a swell job, and, uh, you know, keep on keeping on. Keep trucking. Keep going. You guys are doing great. And so finally, uh, hear these words of blessing and benediction. Neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, 
nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. 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 Praise the one who breaks the darkness with a liberating light. Praise the one who frees the prisoners, turning blindness into sight. Praise the one who preached the gospel, healing every dread disease, calming storms and the one who brings to water to the desert's burning sand. From this well comes living water, quenching thirst in every land. Praise the one to love incarnate, praise to suffer. Go in peace. Bear witness to God's love in all you do. Christ is with you. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.